Welcome to growing your own food in your own backyard. And if you are new to my channel, please consider subscribing and don't forget to hit the like button. This video continues to provide tips on how to grow Moringa in cold climates. I live in a climate where the temperature does drop below freezing. Therefore, I will share tips on what steps to take to ensure your Moringa continues to grow. These are dwarf Moringa trees. I started from seeds. They will grow four to six feet tall. Now, unlike other varieties of Moringas, the dwarf Moringa tree will remain and grow short. This size makes them well suited for container growing, which makes growing in northern climates much easier indoors and outdoors. Some people just do not have the space to grow a big, full-grown, full-blown Moringa tree. Moringa does have a tap root similar to carrots and small feeder roots. Therefore, I use containers that are deep enough to accommodate the root system. I will transplant once the tap root is about four to six inches and has formed a bark. And that's really critical because once the tap root forms the bark, it's gonna be a lot stronger and it will be able to sustain the transplant of a Moringa tree. These Moringa trees are still fairly young, although there's a dwarf tree and will grow about six feet tall. But again, until the taproot for forms a bark, I don't want to transplant it. Um, the soil I um, am very particular with, it does have to have um, sandy soil in order for the soil to drain well. Now, I do add sand to my soil mix so the soil is loamy. Moringa is a sun and heat loving plant, so I have it located in a sunniest part of my yard where it gets direct sun. Now, this particular tree right here was long and leggy, and I harvested the tree. I pruned the Moringa pretty heavy as you can see this part of the tree. So it got cut back about six inches from the surface of the soil. And as you can see, it's branching out and starting to grow bushy, hopefully um, with great, um, greater leaf production. Unfortunately, next Tuesday, the temperature is gonna drop below 40 degrees. At 40 degrees or lower, Moringa trees will go dormant and the leaves will shrivel and fall. Therefore, I will have to bring these um, Moringa trees indoors. These Moringa trees will grow under my grow light over the winter months. I still need to regularly prune the tree and continue to ensure that I don't stress the tree with too, with too much overwatering. And as soon as the tree gets to be about six feet tall, I will go ahead and harvest the leaves. And then I will cut the Moringa back and allow it to grow up and grow a lot bushier like I did this one. Now this one right here, it grew probably about 18 inches tall, but it was really leggy and it wasn't as bushy as this. So now, it's, as you can see, it's growing a lot bushier. So I just wanted to continue to share tips on growing Moringa trees outdoors. You can grow Moringa trees in a cold climate. You just have to make sure you're bringing it in during the winter months. Make sure it has a bright sunny window if you're going to put it in the window. In my case, I don't have a bright sunny window, so therefore I will grow, put it under my grow light. Now I'm going to bring you indoors and show you the Moringa tree that I'm growing indoors under my grow light. So for those that are growing outdoors during the summer months, great. And if you want to grow Moringa trees indoors in a sunny window or under a grow light, both are possible in order to have Moringa, fresh Moringa leaves in a cold climate. This is my other Moringa plant 
I'm growing indoors. I have attempted to produce the right environment for this plant to thrive indoors. Moringas are sun and heat loving plants, therefore I'm growing it under my grow light and I am making sure it has the right number of sun hours in order for it to thrive. This Moringa plant is in a well draining soil and again as I mentioned earlier that you want to make sure your soil is very loamy and you want to add soil to rich um, excuse me you want to add to your soil sand or uh, perlite in order to make it very loamy now this particular plant actually was two feet long and it was just a long plant and all of the leaves were at the top and this is typical with moringa plants if you don't cut them back so I cut this plant back right here as you can see which is two inches above the soil line and therefore it put out another shoot which um, gave it a chance to leaf out so let me go back and, and, and indicate that the original plant right here that was up two feet long had all of the leaves at the top with no chance of it leafing out. So therefore I trimmed it back two inches above the soil level. So now it's starting to leaf out and has five branches, one, two, three, four, five. So therefore it now has a bushier look to it as opposed to how it was prior. You do not want to overwater Moringa plants. As you can see, there's signs of stress on this particular Moringa plant because it's overwatered. Now I did check the soil, the soil is moist, but I need to monitor it because when um, you have, um, when you have leaves of pale yellow or white, um, that's a sign that you either are not watering enough or you need to cut back on the watering. In this particular case, I need to cut back on the watering because um, it's showing signs of stress. But other than that, it looks good. Now, this plant was not planted in a tall container like the other two that I um, showed. However, once this plant gets to about a year old, I want to make sure that the bark is around that tap root because if you uh, re transplant it when that tap root is still young it will go into transplant shock so this will become what they call a yearling and hopefully it probably be maybe about another foot by the time I transplant it and hopefully that tap root has a bark around it it's kind of a little bulb like that and then I can go ahead and transplant it into a very tall container. The reason why you want to um, plant, uh, grow moringa plants in tall containers because the tap root is real long. And the other tall, those other tall containers are good. But once I transplant them, I probably would get another tall container like this that's really a tall and thin and that will ensure that you can successfully grow moringas in containers. Now, unlike other climates where they can actually grow them in the ground, that's great, but unfortunately in zone 5B, when you're trying to grow a moringa in a northern climate, you will have to grow it in a container, but you wanna make sure that you are giving it the right environment to thrive, good sunlight, the right amount of sunlight, and you're not overwatering it, you have good loamy soil, and that you're growing it in a tall container so that it's, the tap root has a chance to grow down long. So I just wanted to give you an update on how I'm doing on growing moringa plants in a cold climate in zone 5B. It can be done. It's just a matter of mimicking the actual environment that your moringa plants grow in. If I wanted to harvest all this, I could, but I want to make sure that I get another foot of growth on it, repot it in the right 
tall uh, uh, container, then I'll cut it back, harvest it, so the more it grows, the more bushier it gets. So this is my um, experience and tips on growing moringas in zone 5B in a northern climate, whether you have them outdoors during the summer, growing and then bring them in under a grow light or just grow indoors under a grow light. Thank you for watching and don't forget to hit the like button.